Hey guys, Mike here at Amish Tutorials and welcome back to a new video. Alright, well in this video, which is part 2 of looking at the uh, particle flocking system by Tiktoast, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create some end particles and we're going to connect them to a curve. Okay. Now the whole purpose is uh, to create something that will look like a flock of birds or a school of fish. So uh, in uh, one of the upcoming videos, I will actually create an instance so we can replace the end particles with the animals of choice. But that said, in this video, we're going to demonstrate how to connect it to a curve. All right, cool. So let's start by creating our, our particles. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do that, but we're going to start with our FX menu. And under end particles, we're going to go to create an emitter. OK, we're going to hit the option box. Um, okay, I want to have uh, omnidirectional uh, distribution. Uh, the rate 200, that's fine, and we'll leave all of that as is. Okay, we're going to create, and now we're going to set our frames to let's say 500, and we're going to simply hit play. Now they're going to drop straight down, and the cause of that is if we go into our end particle shape, we have to ignore the wind and the gravity. Go back to frame one. All right, and we're all good. Okay, so next step, we're going to go up to our Tech Toast tab, and we're going to create a new particle flocker window. All right, you can see that nothing is created so far, so we're going to select this guy, and now we have the options to tweak, and we first need to connect our particles to our flocker system. So we're going to go to Windows, to Outliner. We're going to select our particle and our particle flocker by holding down Control and selecting. And then we're going to go up to Fields and Solvers and go to Assign to Selected. And make sure you do that under the FX menu. All right. OK, let's see if that made any difference. We're going to hit Play. And you can see that it has affected the particles in how they move. Um, but it doesn't have a target yet to act upon. And that's why it's just kind of going all over the place, right? So we're going to go back to frame one. We're going to switch to our top view. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out a bit. We're going to go up to Create, Curve Tool, CV Curve Tool. And let's start somewhere around here. And we're just going to go around something like that. That's fine. OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into this view. And we're going to right click and go to Control Vertex. And we're going to start to pull up these vertices. So hit W and just pull that up. And then we'll just pull these up just so we get some movement that is not just in a circle. OK, hang on. I don't want those. All right, we'll do something like that. Doesn't really matter too much. All right, cool. So. Now, if we hit play, you still have the emission of end particles, and now we need to connect that to our path, all right? So we're going to open up our flocker window. We're going to stop our animation. And what we're going to do is we're going to open our outliner. We're going to select our particle flocker. And with that selected, we're going to shift select our curve, and we're going to click on add target. OK, so that's going to be the target for our uh, end particles to focus on. All right. Now we've selected path follow here and we didn't tweak this up here yet. But first, let's see what we got. So we're going to go back to frame one. We're going to hit play. And let's see if these guys are following at all. You can see that they're slowly trying to follow that path. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to bump up the maximum speed. OK. So let's do somewhere in the range of 45. And as you can see, 
it's now speeding up quite a bit. Nice. Maybe even a little bit more than that. Let's do 50. That looks okay. All right. Maybe that's a bit too much. Let's go back to 40. That's fine. Okay. Let's stop that. We're going to tweak the force. Let's bring that down a bit to, let's say, 5. And see what we get. Back to frame 1. And it's doing a pretty good job following the path, as you can see. And, you know, the number of um, end particles that are emitted per second is quite high. So that kind of affects the, uh, the speed as well. All right. Just going to stop that. Let's see. We'll tweak the Boyd separation a bit. Let's bring that down to a very low value. Uh, what you will see is that the particles will stick closer together. And there you go. All depending on what kind of simulation you're going for. Okay. And now let's do the opposite. Now let's crank that way up. And immediately you get a totally different effect. Okay. I'm going to pull down the speed a bit. And let's bring the force down a bit as well. Okay. Let's have a closer look. And you can see that it's following that path. All right. Now you have a couple of options here under target. Uh, the steering type right now is to follow the path. You can also, um, for example, select flee. And once you do that, it's going to do anything it can to stay away from the path, which is an option as well, right? You can select uh, Wander, or in this case, Seek. And let's go back to frame one. And on Seek, what it does is it kind of goes out and looks for itself, if you will. So it kind of clumps together, all right? So you can see that's going outward, inward. And if I tweak the force on that, you're going to see kind of a different behavior. It's pushed out quite a bit. Let's bring that back in more and more and more. And there you go. You can see that it's all drawn in. All right. So that's just a, a quick tip on how you can connect your end particles to a path. I'll just uh, set this back to follow path. Increase that speed a little bit. And there you have it. All right. So if you've got any questions, let me know. And that said, thank you guys for watching. And next time we'll instance some birds or fish. All right. Cool.